On Sunday, the GOP official account tweeted that Biden is, quote, proving to be a detriment to getting mothers back to work after nearly 1.5 million moms have left the workforce to care for children during remote learning. So Biden's uh, Democratic strategist and owner of JC Strategies, Jennifer Holdsworth Karp, Senior Director of Policy at the Conservative Partnership Institute, Rachel Bovar, join us now to discuss. Let's put the tweet up there on the screen because it really is remarkable. You almost kind of have to revel in it, especially given how much of a debate there is right now, Rachel, happening around child care and about subsidy and all that. I mean, the official account of the party saying Biden is proving to be a detriment to getting mothers back to work doesn't seem like the best message, number one. And also, so, I mean, it not really, or it at least obscures what some of the debate which is happening right now. Yeah, fire the intern, uh, really missing what's going on with <laughs> <laughs> the GOP. With that tweet. Don't blame the intern. Does, Don't blame the intern. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that, is, that is very 1990s, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it, it really does speak to the debate that's going on in the Republican Party right now. Yeah. And I think, you know, Democrats are picking up on it as well. But, you know, the Republican Senate in particular is sort of, uh, populated by these proposals to give families more support. And the crux of the debate in many cases is, you know, do you tie them to to employment, especially for mothers? And, and that's responding to, I think, a couple of things, polls specifically that say, you know, two things. One, women are having less kids than they actually want. And two, that they want more flexibility, actually, to be in the home in the early years. And so Republicans are really trying to figure out how to address those concerns financially and federally. How do we support mm -hmm. women who want flexibility, who want to make that choice. And so you're seeing bill legislation put forward. Everyone from Mitt Romney to Josh Hawley to Mike Lee mm -hmm. has bills trying to sort of address this issue. But it's definitely not an issue of how do we get mom back to work? Yeah. It's how do we support mom and child rearing? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, Jen, there's a lot that's interesting here. I mean, let me throw these stats up on the screen. It is true that women are leaving the workforce and some of the speculation is that essentially, I mean, remote learning has just been brutal mm -hmm. on moms and we, we may wish that the child care duties were more equitably split, but it's just still not reality in America. So if you look at this, you can see um, on the screen there that in April you had 2.64 million women uh, leaving the labor force that's an uh, increase over what was happening just the month before. You don't see the same dynamic happening among men. So it is a real concern of women have had tremendous burdens placed on them during the pandemic. Of course, what I would say is Democrats at least are like have some plans around affordable child care and some other efforts that the vaccination is going well so that schools can actually reopen and get people back to where they were before the pandemic. There's yeah. so much to unpack with this answer. You know, denigrating mother to, motherhood to own the libs is not something <laughs> I was anticipating from the Republican Party, but uh, we're here now. So, but, but look, a lot of Democrats got panned when they went on TV and said child care is infrastructure. This is what we were talking about. It became sort of a joke on Twitter that everything is infrastructure. But if you really want to talk about how our country is built and how it functions, we know, Crystal, like you said, that majority of the burden of the pandemic did fall on women in terms of homeschooling, in terms of job loss, in terms of complete economic loss throughout the last year and a half. We need to start to fix that. But there's a deeper issue here. Women are also leaving the workforce because wages are not high enough. You know, if they are married, their husband's wages are not high enough. So they're already struggling in a single income household. They can't afford childcare. We need to help them with child care. We also are talking about why children aren't returning to schools. There's a lot of consternation in every state about why that is. One of the biggest reasons is that schools are overcrowded, they have poor ventilation, and they cannot risk sending them back into those schools in the current environment when we still don't have all vaccines approved for certain school-aged children. There is so much behind that one tweet that Republicans just refuse mm -hmm. to confront, not to mention that this is national data that they're talking about, which includes majority of red states whose governors are doing nothing to help the residents of that state. So I, I think this was a big self-own to put out into the universe in so many ways, but at least it's able to start a conversation that Democrats have been trying to have with Republicans for decades. What do you make of that, Rachel? Um, because, and I, I would say, actually, I do think just reopening school would do a lot for this and children are just really not at risk. Um, what do you think? 
So a couple of things. I think it's definitely true schools need to be reopened. And I think Mm -hmm. a big sticking point in a lot of that has been the teachers union itself. And Biden has had many opportunities to push them in the reopening direction. And he's passed on that Mm -hmm. so much so that we saw recently that the CDC reopening guidance took direction from the biggest teachers union in the country. So I think he's missing some key uh, opportunities to really push for school reopening, because I do think it's not just moms, although I think the data shows moms have been home more um, you know, robustly than dads, but one parent has to be there when the schools aren't open. Yeah, and so I think that's sure. a huge issue. But the second issue I think that Republicans are, are trying to address is, you know, the Biden's daycare subsidy gets at, you know, child care for women who are in the workplace. And I think a lot of Republicans are saying, look, there's some women that just want to be home with their children in the beginning. And why aren't we supporting them? Why aren't we giving them, you know, a, a choice neutral opportunity to help with child rearing? And, th- and you saw J.D. Vance, I think, come out with an uh, essay mm-hmm. in The Wall Street Journal making that point that like this is, you know, you're pushing women into one choice and only supporting the expression of that when there's many ways in which women want to raise their families that the government could be supporting that isn't. And I think that's the crux of the debate uh, for the right right now. Yeah, yeah I but I mean, Jen, uh, Democrats did pass a child tax credit um, to help support families who and, and women in particular who want to make the choice to stay at home and with their kids. And I always find this discourse a little bit perplexing when on the one hand you have like, yes, we should celebrate mothers who want to stay home with their children. I 100 percent agree with that. But on the other hand, there's this other discourse of like, we must cut off unemployment and force everyone back into the labor force, whether they want to be there or not. And we must put work requirements into whatever sort of programs that we put on offer. Those two things seem to be very much at odds with one another. I do. I also think that some of the arguments coming from the right are a little bit disingenuous. When Democrats suggest programs like UBI for kids that would not only just completely decimate the child poverty rate in America, we say, look, we want to give these families money to spend as they choose to to support their children and to help raise them. Republicans are all of a sudden very, very concerned about giving money directly to families. They want to control how it's spent. They want to control the amount. But then if you talk about other ways of giving money to families in terms of tax breaks or tax credits, then they're all about it. It it cancels each other out. It's disingenuous. I think we need to have a more holistic conversation about how we support women both in the workforce and out of the workforce. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot. We could hold a whole hour um, on this. (laughs) It is a fascinating, important topic. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Next on Rising, friend of the show, Glenn Greenwald. He's going to join us to discuss what's going on in Israel. There's more when Rising continues.